Hello there, happy Friday, and it's time for my Black Friday pickups. Some very exciting stuff, as you can see here. I uh, just picked up this Star Trek box set today. It was half off, and I've got a couple of Blu-rays as well. I picked up uh, Horns with Daniel Radcliffe. Very enjoyable movie, in my opinion. This is kind of a mix of genres. It's got uh, horror, it's got comedy, it's got romance, and it's got drama. And it's kind of a thriller at the same time, so it's got sort of everything going for it. It's about Ig Parish. His girlfriend is mysteriously murdered and he gets blamed for the murders. And while he's dealing with all that, he starts to sprout horns from his head. And that brings out the worst in people. They begin to con confess their deepest, darkest desires and secrets. But he starts to use that as a way of uh, finding out who killed his girlfriend. So, uh, yeah, great movie. Uh, stars Daniel Radcliffe of Harry Potter fame, but he actually plays an American in this one. Does a very good uh, American accent. Almost all the actors in this movie are British, but they're doing American accents, actually, which I found kind of funny. Uh, it's also based on a book by Joe Hill. If you're unfamiliar with Joe Hill, the author, he is the uh, son of my favorite author, Mr. Stephen King. So, I haven't read the novel yet, but I have seen the movie. Uh, so I'm probably going to have to check out the novel sometime too because, yeah, as you can tell, I love me some Stephen King. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a Stephen King video um, just dedicated to his books at some point because I have a lot. I have a lot, as you can tell. But yeah, uh, Horns, great movie with Daniel Radcliffe. Um, just this crazy wild mix of genres, very entertaining. And it was really, really cheap. It was like five bucks or something like that. So I picked this up. Also have Mad Max Fury Road. I uh, finally picked this up. Great action movie. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, I knew I wanted to pick this movie up, but I wanted to wait until it was a little bit cheaper. And yeah, it was like five bucks, four, four or five bucks, something like that. So perfect. I uh, saw this in theaters. Great action movie. A lot of people think this is the greatest movie of the year. A lot of people think this is like one of the best action movies ever made. I don't I don't quite think it's that good. I think it's a very fun, explosive popcorn movie. And it is my favorite Mad Max movie overall, out of the four. But uh, I don't think it's some kind of crazy masterpiece. I wouldn't, you know, go quite that far. But I know it's it's gotten a lot of great uh, reviews. Critics seem to love it. Fans seem to love it. So, yeah. If you haven't seen Mad Max Fury Road and you like action movies, high octane adrenaline action, non-stop sort of movies, then yeah, this is perfect for you. Charlize Theron and uh, Tom Hardy are great as well. Uh, it's almost more her movie than 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 uh, his movie. It should be called Imperator Furiosa Fury Road uh, because she really steals the movie. So really awesome action non-stop literally a non-stop action movie this so sweet also picked up ex machina finally i've been uh, waiting to pick this movie up for a very long time this is my favorite movie of the year so far uh please note that i said so far because i haven't seen star wars yet i haven't seen uh sicario yet there are a, a couple of movies i want to see that you know might turn into my favorites but but so far this is my favorite movie the movie of the year it's a wonderful science fiction movie. It's about a uh, an employee of this uh, great company, almost like Apple, who uh, wins a contest to uh, visit his his boss, his mysterious boss, who's this kind of Steve Jobs type who lives in this beautiful uh, house uh, up in the uh, mountains. And he's built this artificially intelligent robot that you see here called Ava. And he's actually there to test her. He's going to do a Turing test on her. And if you're not familiar with what a Turing test is, um, it's where you try to make a machine convince you that it's a person. If you're interviewing this machine, this robot, and it manages to convince you that it's human, it wins the Turing test. A lot of people have done this with machines in real life, and it's never, ever, ever happened. It's never passed the test. So a uh, wonderful, wonderful movie, beautiful, fantastic performances, and a really like intellectually stimulating movie as well. Great dialogue, great themes. It gets really deep, uh, sort of e about ethics and morals and all that kind of stuff. So if you like that stuff, if you like good sci-fi, 
check out Ex Machina, best movie of the year so far. And th this actress, uh, this wonderful actress that you're seeing on the cover here is from Sweden, actually. Her name is Alicia Vikander, or Alicia Vikander. Uh, there are rumors that she might play uh, Lisbeth Salander in an upcoming Girl with a Dragon Tattoo movie, or a Girl in the Spider's Web movie, so that's cool. I don't talk about this a lot on my channel, but I have uh, an autism spectrum disorder. Sort of the condition formerly known as Asperger's Syndrome, I guess you might say. And I'm just, yeah, I, I can relate a lot to movies like these. I just find them fascinating, you know, uh, about consciousness and, and social development and neurology and, and, and stuff like that, you know. Being self-aware but self-contained. They, they actually use the term non-autistic in this movie. Meaning, of course, that Ava is aware of other people in an emotional way. She's uh, not simply locked into her own little world as... Uh, autistic people tend to be or autistic machines i guess you might say so yeah uh, awesome movie fantastic just see it if you like a good rich rewarding sci-fi experience i also picked up aladdin i uh, wasn't planning on buying this one but it was so cheap again it was like four or five bucks so i couldn't pass it up um aladdin is not my favorite disney movie but i do enjoy it overall i think it's a lot better than hercules for sure <laughs> I don't like Hercules, if, you, <laughs> if you've noticed. One of those movies that I grew up with, uh, for my generation, people born in the mid to late 80s, um, you know, movies like Aladdin and The Lion King are, are sort of part of the whole Disney experience, I guess. Uh, I kind of like the classics more. I talked about that a lot on my channel. I like the sort of 50s uh, Disney movies the best, almost, and the new ones. I really enjoyed the the really new ones but Aladdin is is solid it's good enough that you can watch it and enjoy it I thought for that price what the hell plus uh, I have a niece uh, she's almost two years old at this point uh, soon and yeah when she when she gets to that age where she wants to watch a lot of Disney movies I'll have a, a variety of Disney movies for her to watch so can't hurt I guess and last but certainly not least uh, this beautiful box that arrived today Star Trek The Next Generation The Full Journey on Blu-ray. I have been waiting to pick this up for so long. This was actually not a Black Friday deal per se, but it was already on sale. It was on half price. So instead of paying 120 bucks for this thing, I paid about, I don't know, 50, 60. So I, th I think that's a pretty decent price for a show like this. Seven seasons, 41 Blu-ray discs. So let's have a look at this box here. Uh, I have reviewed other Star Trek stuff on my channel, including the original series. And the original series was packaged in a similar box, but this is much, much sturdier on the inside, and I'm happy about that because the original series was just a travesty, just awful. I mean the packaging, not the show. Trust me, the, the show's great, the packaging was horrible. All right, uh, here's some information on the back. And these have all been remastered in high definition. I've seen some of the remasters at a channel called Trek Core, I think it's called. And they just look phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic. All right, we're going to dig into the special features here. Reunification 25 years after Star Trek The Next Generation. Historic cast reunion inside the writer's room. Seth MacFarlane hosts a candid roundtable conversation with members of the show's writing staff. Ronald O'Moore, Brandon Braga, Rene Echevarria, and Naren Shankar. Stardate revisited the origin of Star Trek The Next Generation, a multi-part documentary chronicles the series development and launch, featuring all the cast and crew interviews, along with never before seen makeup tests and behind-the-scenes footage. In conversation, the music of Star Trek The Next Generation. Composers from all seven seasons reunite to discuss their work, creating the show's most memorable music scores. Sky's the Limit, The Eclipse of Star Trek The Next Generation, a comprehensive look back at the making of the show's historic final season, featuring new interviews and archival behind-the-scenes footage, plus gag reels, deleted scenes on select episodes, and audio commentary tracks on select episodes. So, uh, there, is, there is a notable thing missing here. It doesn't have the special two-parters. Uh, the show has some very uh, famous two-part episodes, and those were released on separate Blu-ray sets. 
and sort of edit it into full-length movies and they had special bonus features too so if you want to check those out uh, you'll have to buy those separately if you get this this set uh, but I, I think I can live without them I mean the, the episodes are here obviously they're just not edited into um, you know a, a sort of movie format you, you just have to watch them like regular episodes and that's just fine by me. Uh, I've never seen the show before, not a single episode, so I am thrilled to finally be experiencing the next generation, which a lot of people uh, claim is their their favorite Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> see, it's Star Wars month. I just called it Star Wars. Um, Star Trek show. Their favorite Star Trek show. Sorry, two two weeks until The Force Awakens. All I'm thinking is Star Wars right now. But we're talking Star Trek, not Star Wars. They're both great. I love them both. But, all right. Uh, let's open this box up. There you go. And you can kind of fold that back. And then you have these two absolutely massive digi cases in here. <laughs> the biggest I have ever seen in my entire life. Okay, so this is the first digi case here. Seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4 in a single digi case. And it is just absolutely massive uh i think there's like 20 20 discs in every uh digi case so not very practical like i'm not sure why they didn't just uh, why didn't they package every season individually wouldn't that have, that have been easier but yeah whatever i guess so in the back here you have uh, the contents of every disc the episodes and bonus features and stuff like that so uh, it's kind of weird like I wish they had done this a little bit differently, but it's still a lot better than the original series. I hated the way the original series was packaged because the discs would scratch and they didn't even have plastic cases. They were just in these cardboard sleeves. Ah, just horrible. So this is an improvement overall, but it's still like pretty weird the way they've done this in my opinion. So yeah, uh, you basically just got your discs, uh, season one, season two, and on and on and on, and yeah, stacked on top of one another, just 20 discs per, per case, and uh, you'll have to uh, dig through that to get to the discs. There's a mysterious Borg cube, I believe. Awesome. I oh, can't wait to see the show. Like, beautifully remastered, too. That's really... That really sealed the deal for me because it's it's not on Swedish Netflix. You can't watch it there, at least not yet. So I, I wanted to pick up the actual physical box set and see what it was like. Some stuff here, season five. I'm not gonna show you all the stuff in detail because there's just too much, but you get a sense of what it's like. So, and yeah, all your discs for seasons, what was this? five six and seven so three seasons here uh, yeah it might be like um, it's like 41 discs so i think it's like 20 in each it could be roughly 20 in each but i'm sure maybe the first one has 25 and this one has 15 or something i don't know 15 16 and you also get this booklet here the journey of star trek the next generation and this is weird too uh it's cool, but it's kind of weird. Like, you get this sort of introduction to every season, and it's kind of like um, notes about how the, uh, what kind of impact the season had, and which episodes were most famous, and little tidbits. It, it's kind of spoilery, actually, the stuff in here. Uh, so, if you haven't seen the show, you might not want to browse through this one. And there's the infamous quote. I believe they changed it from uh, where no man has gone before to where no one has gone before. So it's gender neutral in this show. I think that's awesome. Star Trek is just one of those uh, pinnacles of science fiction because it, it really imagines a future for all of mankind that is positive. And I think we need that in our lives more than, it, more than anything right now. We really need a vision of the future that is positive and happy and where we can live up to our potential as as a species, as human beings, where we can make the most out of our planet and other planets and we can strive towards, you know, being good people, essentially. Because it, it's, it's, 
so rare these days. Sadly, it's it's becoming so rare, and and that is that is horrifying. So, yeah, uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's pretty much it for that set. A lot of cool bonus features, uh, but most of all, I'm gonna enjoy digging into these seven amazing seasons and watching the show for the very first time. Uh, it used to be aired on television in Sweden. Uh, and and I would, you know, daytime television, I would just sort of glance at an episode every once in a while, but I was too young to appreciate Star Trek at that time. So uh, another funny tidbit about the show is uh, it started airing September 28th, 1987. And the day after the first episode aired, I was born. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I was born September 29th, 1987. Okay, uh, that was my, yeah. My Black Friday pickups, my little haul for you guys there. Uh, I am very happy with the stuff I was able to secure this year. Pretty amazing, and I can't wait to dig into all this stuff and enjoy it. What did you guys pick up this Black Friday, or did you stay at home? Uh, obviously, I didn't. Uh, well, obviously, and obviously, I didn't. I didn't uh, buy this in, in an actual physical store. I uh, ordered it online. Here in Sweden, Black Friday and Cyber Monday is pretty much the same thing. It's, it's becoming more and more like this year, it's really sort of caught on a little bit more. But it's still kind of a rare thing, so you won't see people stampeding uh, through the store to get their Black Friday stuff. And I'm happy about that. I'm very happy about that, in fact. And also we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in Sweden at all. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, The Full Journey on Blu ray. We had Aladdin on Blu ray. Ex Machina. Fantastic film. See it if you enjoy science fiction. Mad Max Fury Road. Also a very fun movie. See it if you like action movies. And Horns with Daniel Radcliffe, which is kind of a horror movie but it's kind of a dramatic romantic horror movie so yeah uh see if you like crazy outlandish humorous dark sort of comedy horror movies this should be uh something for you okay those were all my black friday pickups i will see you in the future sometime maybe after christmas uh, i'll have some stuff to share with you but i think it's going to be a, a it's time for a long break it's time to celebrate christmas Sit back, relax, and just take a breather for a while. So maybe I'll see you next year. Take care.